but that Hunter Biden has been found guilty on all three of those felony counts. We're just getting that in. We have our reporter now that's confirmed by BBC as well. Guilty Hunter Biden on all three of those felony counts. Again, this would carry a maximum of 25 years in prison. Legal experts saying he won't face nearly that amount of time, but that indeed Hunter Biden, the son of President Biden, has been convicted on all three of those felony counts. That is the verdict of this jury, six men and six women. It took only about three hours of deliberations to reach that verdict. Many legal experts felt that the evidence in this case was really overwhelming, brought by the prosecution. What they were able to prove, apparently, now that the verdict has come in, was that Hunter Biden was indeed addicted and or using illegal drugs during the period when he purchased a gun. He then lied about that addiction and that use on a federal form to purchase a revolver. That is the extent of the charges that Hunter Biden has now been convicted of. Again, that news just coming in. This, again, a historic trial, an historic verdict. The son of a sitting president convicted for the first time of a felony in a federal courthouse. All three charges. Uh, Hunter Biden has now been convicted. We will wait to hear from the jury itself. Uh, they'll be reading out uh, the language within the courtroom. We do have some of that language. We know that there's three counts here. The first one, and I can just read out what we believe to be what the jury will say. The first count is charging the defendant with making a false statement in connection with the acquisition of a firearm with uh, the, and that is the first charge. Now, now, count two, charging the defendant with making a false statement with respect to information required to be kept in records. That would be the second charge. And the third one, the defendant would be charged with possession of a firearm by a person who is an unlawful user or addicted to a controlled substance. That will be some of the language that we expect the jury to be reading out in front of the judge and indeed in front of Hunter Biden, who will be back in that courtroom to hear that verdict. We saw him leaving the courthouse just a few minutes after 9 o'clock when uh, the jury was called back in. He's now back inside. It only took a couple of hours today and just one hour on Monday for the jury to reach that verdict. And Carl of course, throughout this trial, the Biden family has, has been in the courtroom. They've been hearing a lot of this testimony. And we know a lot of the Biden family is there today to hear that verdict today at the courthouse. And Carl, as you say, and just for viewers joining us, just to reiterate that Hunter Biden, the son of Joe Biden, has been found guilty on all three counts. And we must emphasize this is quite an historic outcome, isn't it? It is. It already was a historic case. Hunter Biden was the first child of a sitting president to face felony charges in federal court. He now becomes, of course, the first child to be convicted on those charges. You mentioned this earlier, of course. This comes just a few days after the former president, Donald Trump, was convicted in his own uh, hush money case in New York. Those felony charges brought against him there, convicted there, and now we're seeing the conviction of the son of the sitting president, Joe Biden. So it's been a really remarkable stretch of time here in the United States. The justice system charging and now convicting two very high profile uh, people, one a former president, one the son of a sitting president. Of course, the charges have been, if you want to look at this politically, Republicans have accused the federal government of unfairly targeting a former president, of uh, accusing Joe Biden, the current president, of weaponizing the justice system against his former and potentially future political rival. This, however, would seem to go against those claims. The uh, federal prosecutors who are indeed of the government of Joe Biden going after his own son and indeed now convicting him in this court. It's, it's important to remember there was actually a plea deal that had been reached uh, many months ago that would have avoided jail time. It would have avoided a trial altogether for Hunter Biden. That plea deal fell apart. It just simply was not strong enough to withstand any sort of scrutiny by the judge here in this case. The prosecution and the defense was unable to agree on a, on a new plea deal, and that's why we're even seeing this trial taking place here in Wilmington, Delaware. In the end, Hunter Biden 
as we say, that news just coming in, convicted on all three felony counts related to a gun purchase he made in October 2018, as well as his drug use at the time, which is what makes it uh, a felony charge here, those three charges. So it is indeed historic, the first time you've ever seen anything like this, and making it even more unprecedented, coming on the heels of that criminal conviction by a former president, Donald Trump, in his New York hush money case. Carl, thank you. That's my colleague Carl Nasman uh, outside the court in Wilmington in Delaware, where we have had that breaking news in the past few minutes that Hunter Biden, the son of the U.S. President Joe Biden, has been found guilty of lying about his drug use when buying a gun. He's been found guilty of the three charges against him. Uh, and let's get more on that story now. Drugs, guns, prostitutes. This trial was peppered with a multitude of lurid details about Hunter Biden's private life and the chaos that came from his self-acknowledged addiction to crack cocaine. Prosecutors argued that Hunter Biden had committed a crime by lying on a federal form about his drug use when buying a 38 caliber revolver in October 2018. That gun, along with the remnants of crack and drug paraphernalia, were discovered in his car by his then partner, Hallie Biden who was also his sister-in-law, the widow of his brother, Bo, who died of cancer three years earlier. Prosecutors showed video of her trying to dispose of the weapon in a dumpster, and she told the court, I realise it was a stupid idea now, but I was panicking. Why did you panic? asked the prosecutor. Because I didn't want him to hurt himself, and I didn't want my kids to find it and hurt themselves. Hunter Biden has already chronicled much of his struggles with drug addiction in a book, excerpts of which were entered into evidence and read by the author himself in the audio version. Smoking crack cocaine every three days soon became smoking every two days, then every other day, then every hour of every day. But throughout the case, the defence argued that Hunter Biden believed himself clean in October 2018. His lawyer said that the president's son was not using drugs when he bought that gun and that it was never loaded, never carried, never used during the 11 days he owned it. On the first day of the trial, Hunter Biden's stepmother, Dr. Jill Biden, the first lady, arrived at court to support him. It was her 73rd birthday. She sat in the front row of the public gallery, at times appearing emotional as the evidence was laid out. Just before leaving for D-Day commemorations in France, the president himself issued a statement saying he was proud of his son for beating his addiction. Hunter Biden's willful refusal to comply with the... Hunter Biden has also long been a target for Republicans in Congress, who've been investigating accusations he made money by peddling influence when his father was vice president. No charges have resulted from that, and attempts to impeach Joe Biden in connection with his son's business dealings have stalled. This is not the only criminal case against Hunter Biden. He's also due to go on trial in California in early September for allegedly failing to pay more than a million dollars in taxes. Sarah Smith, BBC News, Wilmington, Delaware.